untimely death of Shoghi Effendi in November of 1957 was a terrible blow to his wife, as well as the Baha'is throughout the world. The worldwide affairs of the Baha'i community were safely managed from its world center by a council, including Madame Rabani and eight other senior officials of the Baha'i faith, pending the election of its supreme body, the Universal House of Justice, at the first Baha'i International Convention in 1963. With the orderly development of the world embracing institutions of the Baha'i faith secured, Madame Rabani began her world encircling travels, visiting Baha'i communities young and old in every corner of the globe. Her travels have taken her to practically every country in Africa, all of Latin America and the Caribbean, North America, Greenland, Iceland, and all of the principal island groups in the Pacific Ocean. She has undertaken repeated and extensive travels throughout Asia, visited all of Western Europe, and made five trips to China, including Chinese Mongolia, the Gobi Desert in Manchuria, the People's Republic of Mongolia, Sakhalin Island, and Tibet. More recently, she has traveled extensively throughout Romania, Poland, Bulgaria, the Czech and Slovak republics, and 11 of the republics of the former Soviet Union, including notable visits to the Sakha and Buryat republics. In the course of these travels, she has given countless lectures, met many leading dignitaries, and been interviewed on radio, television, and by the world press. Another dimension of her travels has been her many meetings with heads of state and prominent figures in many lands. As an official of the Baha'i faith, traveling to visit the Baha'is all over the world, because there are Baha'is all over the world, uh, I have automatically come in contact with leaders, spiritual leaders and political leaders. And I think that the, the one that I wanted most to meet, the one that I admired the most, was Haile Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia. This little man lost his kingdom was invaded and taken over by foreign power from Europe. And uh, he went and lived in a boarding house in England and he got back his country. And when he arrived at the airport, because I went there and I knew I met him, which was a great honor, gave me his coronation medal, which was a greater honor, and uh, as a souvenir because I had taken him some kind of a gift. Anyway, the point was that he arrived at the airport and, you know, he was a small man, a very neat, small person. And um, they wanted to put him in a bulletproof car and take him to his palace. And he said, I know my people. I'm going in an open limousine. And they were afraid he'd be assassinated. He said, I know my people. He was a wonderful man, one of the few world leaders that I've ever had the honor of meeting that I could truly admire.